Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I've got a little bit different video here. I've got Rocky Linux 9.3 working. And not only that, I've got an NVIDIA 3050 card that I just got. And that's actually how I'm gonna be encoding the videos from now on. Let me show you that real quick. NVIDIA SMI. And this basically shows you that we've got the NVIDIA drivers installed and that they're working. We're running 5452308. And today's date is December 13th, 2023. So these drivers are the current, the latest and greatest today, but that might change. Uh, but yeah, just a quick rundown of how this video is gonna go. Basically, we're gonna go download the Rocky Linux 9.3 ISO from their website. We're gonna go through the install. I'm gonna show you exactly what settings you need to select during the install to make this work. Um, we're gonna configure the operating system, install any dependencies and or tools that we might need. We're gonna prep for the installation of the NVIDIA drivers. Then we're gonna install those drivers. We're gonna disable the open source NVIDIA drivers. And then we will write out the changes to our Grub bootloader We'll restart, we'll test the NVIDIA drivers, basically running that command that I just showed you in the terminal. So this NVIDIA SMI command. And then at that point, once we know that the, the NVIDIA drivers are there and they're working, then we'll set our install to actually boot up into a desktop environment. And in, in this example, I'm using KDE. So if, after we get KDE set to boot, then we will install Flatpak and we can install any other piece of software we might need along with Flatpak. And then at that point, we're ready to restart and boot into KDE with our NVIDIA drivers. Post install, I'll show you how to get DaVinci Resolve installed, VMware, if you wanted, if you wanted to install VMware uh, for virtual machines. We'll get the NeoFetch icon working. You'll see it's, it's just the uh, Penguin logo at first, but we'll fix that. We'll get Brave installed. I'll show you how to get OBS, and because Rocky Linux does have old packages, which is what we want, we want the stability. I don't plan on upgrading this for the 10 years that we've got. Uh, but because, because we've got those old drivers, OBS Studio has a bug when you click on the settings button, and I'll show you that after the install. You click on the settings button and it shuts down OBS completely. So I'll show you how to go into the OBS Studio settings, uh, the config file and we'll set that up the way we want it. And then I'll show you how to get this special cursor that we've got here. It's the same one that Linux Mint has uh, by default, 21.x. Um, and then I'll also show you how to get this awesome wallpaper. And then that should do it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and open up the Rocky Linux website. It's just rockylinux.org. We're gonna go to download. And you can go with the boot ISO or you can get the DVD. If you get the DVD, it'll just be less downloading during the installation. So do you want to download now or do you want to download later? Basically, it's all this is. Uh, but I went ahead and grabbed the DVD version. And I'll pull up my Vin toy here. And as you can see, the DVD version is 9.8 gigs. So go ahead and get that downloaded. And uh, go ahead and switch over to Etcher. Go to etcher.balina.io, download Etcher, and we want the 64-bit app image version. If you're coming from Linux, if you're coming from Windows, grab the Windows portable version, and then Mac, obviously Mac. All right, now that we've got Etcher downloaded, we'll just pull up our downloads folder. You want to right-click, go to Properties, and then Permissions, and make sure that this is executable, is selected. And then you can just double click. Uh, do you wish to run this file? You can check, do not ask again, just press execute. And that's just allowing it to run. All right, so at this point you would want to do flash from file. This is where you would go and you'd find that DVD, the Rocky Linux 9.3 DVD ISO. Select that here. And then I don't have a USB stick in my machine, but this is where you would select your USB stick and then click on flash. It is 9.8 gigabytes, so it's gonna take a while. Once that's finished, um, just leave your USB stick in your machine. Uh, press F11 or F12 to get to your boot menu. And you want to select your ISO that we just wrote to the USB stick. 
And what that's going to do is it's going to boot up from that ISO. And that's where I'll rejoin you guys at that boot screen. Okay, and we're back at the boot menu. Like I said, I'm using Ventoy. Your boot menu may look a little different. Mainly, you want to make sure that you select your ISO. Um, so in my Ventoy, I've got the 9.3 DVD. So I'm going to select that and press Enter. And we want install Rocky Linux 9.3. And we'll let this boot up. All right, and once we've made it here, it's basically just the welcome screen, 9.3. Select your language and hit continue. Keyboards English, that's good. Install source is our DVD, our DVD ISO. Installation destination. I'm gonna select my hard drive. Check, I would like to make additional space available. And when you click on done, you'll get prompted to clear out all your partitions, go ahead and do that. Hit the delete all, reclaim the space. And that's gonna free up the space that uh, Rocky Linux needs to install. Language support, English is good. Software selection. This is very important. This step, you, you have to make sure that you only install server. It's server with a GUI. You don't want that one, you want server. And we'll click done. K-Dump, I don't need that, so I'm just gonna uncheck that and hit done. I'm hardwired, if you got a wireless connection, this is where you'd set up your SSID. I'm not gonna select the security profile, and then I'll set up a root password, and then click done. And I'll create my user. I want to make him an administrator. Then click done. So you shouldn't have anything else left to select. So go ahead and click on begin installation. And I'll speed this portion of the video up. All right, the installation is complete. We'll go ahead and reboot the system. Okay, so as you can see, we're not in a desktop environment. We're just at a login prompt, so we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, and at this point, we're just gonna configure the OS. So then we're gonna pull the RPM Fusion repository, sudo DNS. Latest nine. 
Say yes to that. Say yes to that. And now we want to get Power Tools. Power Tools is known as CRB in Rocky Linux 9X. So it's just sudo DNF fig manager enable CRB. Okay, now we'll do the dependencies and the tools. Now we'll install xorg, sudo dnf install xorg, x11 server, capital xorg, space xorg, x11 x off, yes. Press enter on that. And then we'll install KDE and any other tools that we might want. NF install Plasma Desktop. That's KDE. K screen. SDDM. That's our um, login screen where we put our password in. GTK. Big. Dolphin. That's our file explorer. Console, it's our terminal, Kate, text editor, Plasma, Discover, that's the Discover application, Firefox is our browser, Rocky Backgrounds, 
Um, it just has more default wallpapers for Rocky. So we'll add that. SDDM Breeze. I'm adding this one because if we don't, when we first boot up into KDE, we'll have a very ugly login screen with like a, an on-screen keyboard that's gigantic and it's hard to click off of. So let's go ahead and add the SDDM Breeze for that reason alone. Go ahead and press enter. That's done. Now we'll prepare for the NVIDIA drivers. So these are the dev tools that are required prior to installation. So sudo dnf group install development tools. Yes to that. releases sudo dnf install kernel devil apple release epel release and then we want dkms sudo dnf install dkms yes Okay, it's time to install the NVIDIA drivers now. So we'll just add the NVIDIA repo. So sudo dnf config manager add repo. Yes, actually it doesn't have an S. This is HTTP slash slash developer download NVIDIA compute. CUDA repos rel nine dollar sign we'll put a U name dash I slash Q 
CUDA dash rail nine dot repo. Now we need to install the dependencies that the NVIDIA driver requires. So sudo dnf install. Kernel headers. Put a new name in the parentheses R. Kernel hill. Zip to make auto make GCC GCC C plus plus PCI utils Elf utils dash lib elf dash demo. Say yes to that. If right, that's finished, we're actually going to get to install the driver now. So it's sudo dnf module install NVIDIA driver latest DKMS. Press enter. Say yes to that. Say yes to that. All right, so now that we've got our NVIDIA drivers installed, we need to disable the open source drivers. So to do that, we're just going to go to sudo nano, and it's in its default rub. And then within this command line here, rub command line underscore Linux, let me look at my screenshot.
So after swap, I'm going to do crash kernel equals auto. And then if we come over, we see blacklist. So after quiet, I'm going to do a So we want to do a Noveo, I guess is how you would say it, Noveo dot mode set equals zero. Okay, and then to write that out, you'll hold control and press O, the letter O on your keyboard, press enter, and then we can control X to exit the file. And then I like to always just go back in and make sure that it did accept the changes. So we come down here, crash kernel is auto. And then this is hard to see with the resolution that I'm running at right now during this installation. But yeah, the mode set is zero, so cool. So we'll just control X out of that. And this next step is very important. You need to know if you're running BIOS or EFI. And one, one way to tell that on your boot menu, when you selected your ISO, it would typically say EFI if it's using EFI. Uh, but yeah, this is very, very important. I'm about to write out our grub changes. So I'm going to go sudo grub to make config o boot efi efi rocky grub make config. Just let me make sure I type that right before I press enter. And if you are using BIOS, check the description. I'll put the BIOS command there. Okay, that is done. So we're going to reboot. Keep in mind, we still are at this login prompt. Um, we haven't set KDE as our default desktop environment to boot into it yet. We just want to log back in. And once we're signed back in, at this point, we want to test the NVIDIA drivers. And to do that, we're going to run NVIDIA-SMI. And as you can see, we do have our NVIDIA drivers version 54523.08. And it does show me that I've got a GeForce RTX 3050. So that's perfect. Now that we've verified that, now we can set KDE as our desktop environment. Because otherwise, if we had done, done that prior we, and it wasn't working, then we would have just booted up to a black screen, which is not what we want. So. Now that we've verified, we can do sudo systemctl set-default graphical.target and just press enter on that. Type in your password. And then we want to do sudo systemctl enable sddm. That's gonna be the screen that we're presented with. We can put our password in. And with SDDM, uh, using KDE, you can go get different themes and, and things like that. You can personalize it. Okay, and then now that KDE has been set as our desktop environment, we can go ahead and install Flatpak if we'd like. You can also install pretty much anything that you want at this point. We'll go ahead and add the FlatHub repository.
just want to make sure I type that right and press enter. And if you didn't want to add that here, since we have already got KDE installed and set as our desktop environment, you, at this point you actually can boot up into KDE. So if you wanted to copy and paste, since that wasn't really easy to type in manually, you could do that. And at this point we are ready to reboot and get into KDE. So I'll just type in reboot. And this problem loading X.509 certificate, I believe that's the Rocky Linux team waiting on Microsoft to sign that certificate. So you can ignore that. And as you can see, here we are in KDE. I'm gonna switch to X11 just because I believe X11 works better with NVIDIA cards. So I switched to X11 instead of the Wayland. This capture card only does 1080p, so I'm gonna switch over. All right, now that we're in KDE, let's go ahead and put the wallpaper on. Let's get rid of this rainy cloud look. And I'll put the link of this, uh, this wallpaper in the description. So I always like to save this in my pictures. I'll just name it Rocky. And then we can go in here Configure desktop wallpaper, add an image. We'll pick Rocky. There we go. And let's go ahead and change the theme. Probably should have done this first because when I go in here to change this to dark, it's going to change my wallpaper, isn't it? Yep. All right, we'll go back in here and change it back to Rocky. All right, in the OBS portion, there's not really a way for me to demonstrate it, but if you bring up the terminal, you can just type sudo dnf install obs-studio, and that'll install OBS. I've got it running right now. There's not really a way for me to show you clicking on settings will crash it, um, but since we can't click on that settings button, this is where the config file lives. So home, username, dot config slash obs dash studio basic profiles and then I, I don't have mine titled so it's untitled but it's this basic ini if you come in here you can change where the output of the file is the format i've changed this from mkv to mov and here's your encoder information and then if you, if you double click on this MOV, Kate does a really cool thing. It highlights all the different MOVs so you could, you know where, they, where they're at so you can change them all. The main thing for me was I needed to change this output here. It was 1080p and I changed it to 2560 by 1440. So you just make those changes and then you just save this file out. And I don't know if you noticed, but when I changed the theme, our application launcher here, the icon changed to KDE. So we'll just click on, we'll just click on that icon and if you type in XFCE, there's our icon. So we'll put that one back. Gotta, gotta rock the Rocky Linux. And if you wanna change up the cursor, this is how you do that. So I'm just gonna click on the super, type in theme for global theme. Put a cursor and then the three dots get new cursors. And I want the buy beta. And I always get the modern classic here. Click on install. We want the third option, the uh, tar file. Click on the install. And we can close out of that. And here's our cursor here. And I like to change it to 32. Apply. And we'll have to restart. You see how it's still trying to revert back if we hover over. If we hover over the taskbar, it looks right, but if we don't, then it, then it, go, it reverts back. So I'll do a quick restart. 
All right, now let's go grab the Brave browser. Let's bring up Firefox and go Brave browser. And we'll go to download. Essentially, we're just looking for the command. Fedora, Rocky, Rail. Bring up a terminal. Paste that in. Say yes to that. Now if we go to internet, you can set it as your default if you'd like. I'm just gonna uncheck the telemetry. It's already in the dark thieves. That's great. I believe. Yeah, it's already got an icon as well, so it's perfect. Okay, and if we open up the console and do a neo fetch, not found. All right, so we'll do a sudo dnf install neo fetch. Say yes to that. Okay, so if we try to do a neo fetch, you'll notice it's just this penguin here. So let's fix that real quick. And it, to do that, we've got two command lines here. And I'll put this in the description. I'm just gonna paste this in. And paste this in. And I'll close out a terminal. Come back in, neo fetch. And boom, we've got our Rocky, Rocky Linux icon there. All right, now we'll run through how to get VMware player installed. So to start, we need these dependencies. So we'll do sudo dnf install kernel headers and kernel devel. It doesn't look like we've already got those. So that's great. So we'll do a list to see where we're at. And then cdn do documents. That's where I've got the VMware bundle that's where I've got it downloaded to and I will put the link to that in the description on where you can go to download this VMware bundle so what we want to do at this point is just sudo dot forward slash and then VM and then I'll hit tab and what that'll do is it'll auto populate that file for me so I'll just press enter All right, and you do see that it's successfully installed. Uh, what we first want to do is just type in VM player. And there is, uh, it's, it's part of the install that we need to finish. So we'll just accept the terms. And then would you like to check for updates? Sure. Do you want to join the customer survey? No. And then use a free license finish and put in your password. And so now we've got VMware installed. So we can close out of that. And if you want, I believe it's under like system. Yeah, here we go. So you can run it here and you can pin it to your taskbar at the bottom. All right, and one of the main reasons people choose Rocky Linux, one, it's stable, you don't have, you can install it and it's good for 10 years, right? You don't have to worry about it. Um, the other reason is DaVinci Resolve, it's the official supported uh, distro for DaVinci Resolve. That's what I'll show you how to do now. So first thing, we want to install these dependencies. Say yes to that. And I've already got the DaVinci Resolve run file um, downloaded, but I will put that in the description. So I'll just CD to documents and we'll do a dot slash DaVinci 
And again, I just typed in capital D, lowercase a, and hit tab, and it finished out the file for me. So I'll just press enter on that. And then just run through this wizard next. Agree. Start install, put your password in. finish all right now and you will see it's got an icon on the desktop it does throw it under maybe multimedia huh lost and found I don't know why I put it there but you do have a um, start menu way to get to it as well uh, so we'll just double click on that and I have noticed on first launch I get this little black screen here I believe if I waited this out, it would go away. But what I'll do is I'll just right click on this and close. And just just wait after you've closed that screen and it will eventually load. Let's see, the application is not responding. Let's go ahead and terminate that. And then we'll wait. And you do see this DaVinci Resolve splash screen does eventually pop up, so it, it's working. And keep in mind, this is the first launch, so it does take a little longer than normal. So now when I make videos for you guys, I'm gonna be 100% Linux based. I don't have to capture the footage on my Linux machine and then export it anymore. Now I can just capture from here and use DaVinci Resolve to edit and then upload to YouTube. So it's pretty awesome. 100% Linux. I love it. All right. So we'll go, th we'll go with an uh, untitled project. And then now I need to make some footage so I can show you guys the next problem we've got. Um, so let me go ahead and bring down OBS. Or actually, let me stop the recording here. And just real quick, I've minimized DaVinci Resolve. I pinned it to the task, uh, to the to the taskbar, and I'm gonna right click on this icon and just move that to trash. I don't like any wallpaper icons. I've had too many users I've dealt with over the years that completely paint their background with icons. I just, I can't do it. Okay, so basically this is just going to be the test video that I want to show you guys. So I'm going to stop the recording here and we're going to import that into DaVinci. All right, I'm contradicting myself. I just said I don't want any icons on the wallpaper, but for demonstration purposes, this is the video we just filmed like two seconds ago. So if I bring up DaVinci, I go to the edit tab and I'm going to right click into um, the media and I'm going to do import media and then I want my desktop where we've got our test video open as you can see it imports but if we go here it's all gray and if I were to play this I wouldn't have any audio any any audio or any video right so this is me basically talking about I deleted the um, icon off the desktop blah 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 I'm not getting anything right so we'll close this and go ahead and remove it. Remove selected clip. All right, and then we'll minimize resolve again. Now, this is how we get around that. We've got a we've got a code that we've got to run, basically transcodes from whatever format I'm using to capture in OBS. So, if anyone is is good with um, OBS and DaVinci. If you know what format I need to be encoding in, that would be awesome, and then I wouldn't have to do this. But uh, if you're running into the same issue, this is how you fix it. So let's do this to where my hat. I mean, we want to go to desktop, and there's our little movie. So now we'll take this line of code here. Or I shouldn't say line of code. This command, paste, and then you'll see. I'm basically just going to have to come in here. 
change. Let me close this. So since I'm already in desktop, it can already read where I'm at. So I'll just do 13 tab and you, you can see it does the test video, right? And then it's going to go in and change the format that the video was encoded in and make it the correct en encoding format so we so Da Vinci can see it. So we'll just run this. You see it does take a while to load. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but my computer fans just kicked on as well. So, so it takes some resources to get this done. So it'd be awesome if I could just do this while I'm in OBS, while it's encoding to begin with. But yeah, like I said, if anybody knows how to do this without needing to change the format, that would be great. Um, but yeah, if we go into the output file, oh, we don't have a media player. So let's, let's tackle that real quick. Um, we'll do sudo dnf install mpv. And our password, yes. And mpv is just a super lightweight uh, media player. It's great. So if you hadn't heard of mpv before, definitely give it, uh, test it out. We actually could have thrown mpv in the commands when we were doing the install. So. I'll actually go ahead and add that when I put the, uh, I've got all the notes. When I put that in the description, I'll go ahead and throw MPV in that as well. That way we don't have to worry about it. Okay, so now if I right click on this, open with MPV. And just real quick, I've minimized DaVinci okay, Resolve. So I've pinned it to the task. Working. Now let's go back into DaVinci. Import media. We'll do the output file, open. Change the frame rate, sure. Go ahead and do that. And now, if we hover over this, you can see we've got the preview. If we double click, we can actually scrub the video. So, just a pain point in DaVinci with Linux. I believe if we had the uh, free version, we wouldn't have to even deal with any of that. I think it reads the format, the default format from OBS. It's like H264 or something. I'm still learning the, the codex and, and things like that. Like I said, I'm new to YouTube, but not to Linux. So, um, But if we go in, if you noticed when we imported that file, it said it changed the project uh, settings. So if we go to file, project settings, and you're not wanting 1080p, if you're wanting something, you know, more, H, more high def than that, you could change it here, 60 frames. And then you just save that. Now the project is actually, you know, running with that resolution. To take the transcode command one step further, so let's say you've got a folder with all the files that it's taken for your project. We can do a for loop. So for f in star dot movie, which is the format we're using, we can do our our command basically that we ran, you know, for the one liner on that test video. But this time it's going to run through a for loop until it's finished. So it's basically just going to count how many movie files you've got and run through this for loop that many times. And then it'll uh, spit them out with this underscore conversion. So let's go ahead and run that and see what happens. And as you can see, here's our originals and then here's the ones that we can actually import into uh, DaVinci Resolve. We've got the underscore conversion. Another quick way you can tell if you've got your NVIDIA drivers going, so if you just click on Super and type NVIDIA, you've got the X server settings. And if you go in here, I always just go to Thermal, and if I can see how hot or cold the driver's actually doing what it's supposed to be doing. So just another quick way to determine that. If you've got an NVIDIA card, you probably already know about NVIDIA settings. So basically, what got me to, to make this video was... Uh, I was trying to just basically download the DVD version and run through the install with a workstation profile and just boot up whatnot because I'm used to having my AMD uh, my AMD 6600 GPU and I just got this NVIDIA 3050 and basically I got that because you know I've had so many questions about NVIDIA drivers and whatnot and I couldn't be, I wasn't able to to answer them right so I went ahead and got a 3050, got it on sale, pretty cheap. 
with some uh, Best Buy gift cards. I ended up spending about $140, so not too bad. Um, but back to the point, um, I would install Rocky Linux, right? And I tried KDE, Mate, Gnome. I mean, you guys can see my Ventoy. You see all the ISOs I've got downloaded. But essentially, install would work, but when I restart, I would boot up to a black screen. KDE actually restarted. It was like KDE 9.2. So I would actually get through that install and the first boot, it would log in, but after it downloaded the updates, I guess once it went to 9.3, it would restart to another black screen. So I was like, okay, how do we fix this? So I spent the afternoon and basically the notes that I've taken, that's how we made the video today. So, um, but yeah, booting to a black screen basically is what, what uh, spawned this video to happen. That's gonna do it for today's video. Hope you found the video helpful and informative. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. If you're new here, please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any future videos. And actually, I just, I just got a notification on my phone that we just hit 600 subscribers. So I, I can't tell y'all how much that means to me. I, I truly appreciate each and every one of you. So, but uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.